So I don't know if you guys have heard, but there's this little game that's sweeping the world. You might have heard of it. It's called Hogwarts Legacy. Apparently it's kind of a big deal. Everyone's talking about it. People are losing their minds over it. Uh, whether they hate it or love it. But most people seem to be loving it. And I'm not a Harry Potter fan. I didn't grow up around the material. I didn't grow up with the books or the movies. I, I've only read the first book. I haven't seen any of the movies or anything like that. So I'm coming at this from a total outsider's perspective. And I wanted to see, you know, why, why do people love this so much? Why is this resonating with so many people? And I started playing it. I was like, all right, you know, fine, I'll, I'll check this out. So I started playing it and I think I get it. I think I get why people love this so much. And it's not just that it's a well-made video game. And on sort of a video game, game design level, like it's very impressive. The graphics are crazy. The music's amazing. Uh, it feels like this very real, sort of lived in, very well realized fantasy world. But there's something else to it too. And it's something I've noticed with fantasy and fiction in general for a long time. Why do people want to escape to worlds like Hogwarts? You know, it's not the vision that we're given of what's ideal. You know, it's very different from the sort of versions of what we're told people want to live in, what we're told is this sort of utopia, versus what people's revealed preference is, what they actually fantasize about. I mean, the genre of fantasy, what people fantasize about, happens to be something much more akin to the medieval world and the medieval lifestyle, which is very interesting to me. You look at, even in a lot of popular science fiction, where you get something like Destiny, the Destiny video games, where the metaphysic of it is all this like very medieval conception of and light versus darkness, and you have this sort of central hub. You're going on this divine crusade against encroaching darkness from the outside, and it, it has, in its overall structure, a much more ancient and, again, medieval approach to it. When you wander around Hogwarts in the game, this fantasy castle university, I mean, you can see in the materials that are used the rich mahoganies, the oak, the pine, the marble. You can see it's using these very real raw materials, this ancient stone, it's something that has texture to it. There's no plastics in there, there's no stainless steel. It's incredibly lived in real materials, something that you would have seen much more common before. And it's very revealing that when people are fantasizing, that when people are trying to get to a place that is their sort of desirable headspace and envision a world that they would like to inhabit, it's a world that doesn't really have these plastics and artificial materials and polyesters and so forth. It's real things. It's wool. It's stone. It's stained glass. It's this very real textured, earthy materials that are used. And people love that. People instinctively find that appealing. And you get these architectural styles that are much more at place in... Well, the game takes place in Scotland, so... You go back to 1400s, 1300s Scotland, you go to the, the high Middle Ages, and that is the vision of what people find aesthetically appealing, inherently. Very clearly, there's a reason that when you have video games, for example, depicting the modern world and depicting our current setting, those video games tend to be much more crass or based around, really you can only base it around say something like Grand Theft Auto where you're just committing crimes and chaos and trying to tear everything down. Or you base it around warfare, you know, the modern warfare series. Because those are the things that people can do in the modern world that still have a certain level of base, visceral appeal to them. Whereas to really live out this kind of heroic fantasy, you have to go back before the Industrial Revolution. You have to go back to time before everything was confined and, and boxed in. That's why something like, you know, even Red Dead Redemption is a popular setting because you're still on the edge of civilization. Things aren't overly controlled and overly rigid. You're still working with real 
materials in a real natural setting. So it's very revealing then that games like this are so popular. People want to explore, and although it's a, a fantasy sort of modern take on it, it's still a world that is infinitely more appealing than the sort of modernist vision of what we're told we should want more of. You see in Westerners especially, who are just eating this game up in droves, this real craving for a way of life that is more ancient and is more tapped into nature in a more civilized era. And this game is an expression of that. The whole world that it shows is something that's much more in line with the medieval mind and what your average medieval peasant would have actually viewed the world to be, or your average medieval knight. You know, they genuinely believed, people of the Middle Ages and before, genuinely did believe that the world was populated with all these fey folk, these goblins and griffins and spiders and trolls and fantastical creatures of all kinds. They genuinely viewed the world in this way as having these other layers of magic and mysticism to it. And it's also the appeal of magic, and although there are critiques of the sort of Harry Potter magic system, which is a, a separate issue, you do again see this craving for a time when the world was not fully charted, when everything wasn't jotted down numerically and measured and quantified fully. You see this desire for a mystified world. One where there are mysteries, there's magic, there's things you can uncover, there's secrets, you can wander around and you can explore and you can stumble upon something ancient. You can find something cool. You can get into danger. These are all the, the archetypal ways of living that resonate so much, particularly with Westerners, because this is our history. This is the mode of being in which we found the greatest meaning, in which life was at its fullest. Now, Harry Potter, of course, strips the Christianity out of this time period and has its own modern elements to it, which is another conversation in and of itself, but it has enough to hint very strongly at a world and an order of being and is in some sense a reaction to our overly quantified materialist age. This game is succeeding not just because it's a good game, you know, a good there are plenty of good games that are out there that don't receive this sort of popularity, but you see it again with games like the Elder Scrolls series and Skyrim in particular, where people are just given the freedom to explore and, and inhabit a world that's much closer to the way our ancestors used to actually view the world around them. Although, it, of course, it's dialed up and gamified, and it's still on a framework level, the same pattern of living that people of older days used to have, and people of past ages. And there is ultimately a great craving to get back some of that magic. So no matter how much you know, modern media tries to portray the Middle Ages and the times after that as being this, this Dark Ages as they called it, as being this time of before the Enlightenment and of being this, this terrible backwards age, people can't escape fantasizing about being there. I mean, it's in the name, it's fantasy. And fantasy is inextricably linked to the medieval world. Because people know, people know in their souls, even if they may not wrap their minds around or may have sort of a propagandized vision of thinking the ages past were this terrible, bleak time of being, people still know in their heart of hearts, in their core, that there was this powerful magic and draw and appeal to the way of life then that we're lacking now. Whether it's in the architecture or whether it's in the desire to explore or run into fantastical creatures or live in a arguably more civilized and higher way outside of the sort of confines of urbanism, the confines of the nine to five, people crave it, and that can't be suppressed. This is a bit of a more off the cuff style than I normally do, but it's a topic that really gets missed a lot, and I wanted to bring it up and dive into it to understand, you know, there is a reason why this type of media appeals, why even something like Game of Thrones, for as modern as that is, that still holds an appeal. Lord of the Rings arguably does it the best of any of this sort of 20th and 21st century media. But you still see the hints of it everywhere. 